So this is Micromax in Note 1 from Micromax, India's own homegrown company. It costs about 11,000 INR and comes with a full HD display, MediaTek G85 chipset and stock Android. This thing on first impression is the best, like the best in terms of price and money. So should you buy this or the Redmi Note 9 or Realme Nazo 20? Well, to answer all of that, here's my long term review of the Micromax in Note 1. But, but before we start with that, we upload tech videos twice a week. So if you want to stay wiser, make sure you subscribe to TechWiser and hit the bell icon as well. Let's go. Okay, first of all, let's clear the air. You know, all the launch fiasco, the Chini come campaign Micromax did. Well, the internet is divided into two parts about that. We'll not get into that. You know it, I know it. Let's review the product on what it is. Product ka jawab, sirf product se hi diya ja sakta. Well, first of all, I have to say this is good hardware. There are places where cost cutting has been done to reduce the price. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, let's talk about what's good with this phone. Number one, the hardware. This is the best specs you get at this price range, period. There's no cost cutting in terms of raw specs. You get a MediaTek Helio G85, which is a gaming chipset. You get two storage variants. This right here is 4GB, 64GB at 10,000, 11,000 INR. There's also a 4GB, 128GB variant at 12,500 INR, but get this one. This is 1,500 cheaper and Micromax also provides a SD card slot. So you can always expand your storage up to 256 GB easily. About performance, I don't believe in benchmark. So let's talk about real world performance. I played Call of Duty on this device like every day. By default, it takes low graphics, medium frame rate. I tried it on medium graphics and high frame rate and it just tanks bad. You can try medium graphics and medium frame rate, but the default settings are the best. It does get a bit warm during gameplay, but nothing major. You would be able to game it with a breeze. Another thing which I feel shows the performance of a device is the camera launch. This is like a real good life scenario. You pull your phone out of your pocket, launch the camera and take a photo. And here, have a look at the amount of time Micromax in Note 1 takes. I also edited a lot of photos on Adobe Lightroom and it ran pretty well. The 1080p display doesn't have the greatest color or gets like real bright, but it is the best you can get in this range. Great job Micromax. However, about the display, do note that it doesn't have Widevine L1, so you cannot watch Netflix or Prime Video at 1080p on this device. The phone does support dual band Wi-Fi, so you can connect to both 5 GHz as well as 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. Interestingly, Micromax lets you use hotspot and Wi-Fi simultaneously, which I haven't seen in any budget phone. Correct me if I am wrong. So the hardware, no doubt, is pretty great for the price. Few people are complaining about the back panel removing issues and other quality control. We didn't face any issue with this unit. And as long as Micromax and Flipkart are replacing the devices, I don't think it's a big issue. It's okay as long as you agree to replace defective products. Number two, software. After the hardware, Micromax was equally good at the choice of the software. This is stock Android, almost, like here you see. The notification shade is different and then the entire settings menu is different. They have a bit of their own options like Dura Speed, three finger snapshot, some gestures in the setting menu, but yeah, it is as stock as it can get. If you compare with the Realme's or the Xiaomi's, it's very stock. And of course, this also means no ads. Micromax also promises two years of software update with security patches. I have received the number patch. They are even listening to the issues in the software and providing patches for it. Here, have a look at the November patch update. The November update, as you can see, has carrier aggregation improvement, multi-touch improvement, camera improvements, etc. So again, good job Micromax. There have been too many thumbs up, I guess. So apart from hardware and software, another thing Micromax stressed on is they have included a 18 watt fast charge in the box. And frankly, I was sold on that, like, wow, you're sending a fast charger. But then again, I went to Flipkart and Amazon, Realme Nazo 20 and Redmi Note 9. Both of them come with a fast charge in the box. So 
okay i guess charger aside the micromax in note 1 comes with a 5000 mAh battery and it's pretty good like i have to really push it to end it before going to bed on light usage it even lasted one and a half days so you can easily go about four to five hours of screen on time and it will last you a whole day plus you can always fast charge in about two hours roughly from zero to hundred so to summarize it has the best hardware for its price a good 1080p display and equally good battery to back it all up so why not recommend it to everyone well hold on there are some problems with this device which are absolutely deal breaker even though it has stock android it's basically not optimized for the phone okay to show you i use a lot of app like it's 236 apps if you see i write on techwiser.com so that involves a lot of app testing and how to's so uh, over the time i have 236 apps but the point is in day to day usage the device stutters from jumping between apps to the app overview menu at times it gets totally stuck and there are also a lot of bugs in the phone like here it has a single punch hole display which looks good but it hasn't been modified for apps to behave according to the display so here you open whatsapp the names go behind the camera behind the punch hole at times even the notifications icon go behind the punch hole camera they have also left this back button overlay over here other android screens provide you an option to hide this back button for example oxygen os micromax hasn't done that so you have to go and hide it all the way using adb and I can go on and on and there's a big list right here but I should get over it. The next problem is the camera. So Micromax has a 48 megapixel main sensor, 5 megapixel wide angle sensor, 2 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth sensor. Now the 48 megapixel main sensor is really good but again what lets us down is the software processing. At times it takes sharp photos and has a good dynamic range but at times it takes overexposed saturated photos. It's highly inconsistent like have a look this is a good photo the green is a bit saturated over sharpened overall it's a good contrasty photo now when i move a bit back and take it against the window it tries to brighten the entire scene and overexposes everything the colors are muted and this is the case at times it's contrasty and at times it's flat and muted here are some more samples which i took outdoors Interesting thing, there's no auto HDR option. You have a separate dedicated HDR tab. The wide angle camera is 5 megapixel and it's plain bad. The photos under low light or even outdoors are just bad. And here, take a look at the amount of time it takes to switch from the main camera to the wide angle camera. The front camera is a 16 megapixel camera and again, it takes over sharpened photos. But I kind of like that. Here, have a look at the selfie. There's a lot of sharpening on my beard and my face, but I prefer this. That's okay. However, at times, it takes this overblown selfie where the colors are all off. There's no HDR mode for the front camera. Talking about videos, front and rear cameras can shoot 1080p max at 30 FPS, which is great. Again, the story with the video camera is the same as photos. The overall footage is a bit overexposed and the autofocusing for nearby subjects is slow. And this is a video through the front camera of the Micromax in Note 1. And the audio you're listening to is through the internal mic. Let me know how good it is. It's damn windy outside. So all in all, the story is pretty much the same. The hardware of the phone is great, but where it falls is the software. It has a good battery, good display, good hardware, but really, really unpolished software. Bottom line, should you buy this? Well, no. It's a good phone, but if I ask you to buy this phone and you ask me, hey, what about Realme Nazo 20 and Redmi Note 9 Pro or Redmi Note 9? I don't have any answer. Xiaomi and Realme have been making software for a long time and they have better optimized UI. The only thing working for Micromax in Note 1 is stock Android. You wouldn't see explicit ads in the UI, but even this OS needs a lot of work. The software is just beta and it requires even more testing. At this point of time, this is just a beta device. Just give it a pass and maybe, maybe you can get the next version. 
with that said share it with your friends who are looking to buy a micromax device and i'll be looking for the next micromax launches the in 1a or in one whatever they call it so with that said see ya bye